Hello everyone, today I will introduce you to a small and exquisite SP3 to S3 development board. First, let's take a look at the hardware configuration of this ESP3 to S3 development board. This is the ESP3 to S3 development board with a screen. The screen is a 1.9 inch touchscreen with a resolution of 320, 170. You can see that this is a 1 yuan coin. Its height is about the same as a 1 yuan coin. Its width is about twice that of a 1 yuan coin. The resolution of this screen is 320170. Its resolution is quite high. Although the screen is not big, but its resolution is okay. Can be used to run LVGL or some other graphics libraries. Can provide relatively high definition graphics display. We can look at the display of this screen from different angles. Because different angles may reflect light, refraction has a certain effect. So when you only look through the camera, not as clear as our eyes can see. It can be said that this screen is clearer when viewed with the naked eye than on the screen. You can see a translucent button on this screen. There is also a rotating space. These are all based on LVGL. You can see that this small screen can run up to 50 frames. Then the CPU utilization is about 8 or 9, compared to some large screen development boards. This small development board is very capable of driving this screen, can reach a very high frequency. The core module of this development board is an ESP3 to S3 module. Why is it called a module? because it integrates Wi-Fi and Bluetooth functions in this entire module. You can see that the black part is its printed circuit board antenna. With this printed circuit board antenna, you can directly connect to Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. This is an antenna for its Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Then other things and chips are packed in this metal shell. This shell contains the core chip of ESP3 to S3. It also includes some other supporting chips, such as Flash, PSRAM. It's all packaged in this. This module is N16R8. That is to say, its Flash is 16M, then PSRAM is 8M. In simple terms, Flash can be compared to the hard drives of our computers used to store applications or files. PS RAM is equivalent to the computer's memory. Store programs or data in PS RAM during operation. Then you can quickly call and run, but it cannot save data permanently. If the power is off, the data may be lost. So the data is stored in flash. Then when running, it will be called in PS RAM. Of course, the bigger the flash and PS RAM, the better. However, the size of flash and PS RAM that this MCUE SP3 to S3 may support is limited. So generally speaking, 16M flash and 8M PS RAM are more than enough. There is no problem running some LVGR programs normally. For example, a LVGL application running on such a large screen, 16M flash is enough. You can see, we used a larger picture. There is also a button and control that consumes more resources. In such a hardware configuration, it ran at 50 FPS. That is, we set LVGL. If the highest frame rate is 50 FPS, it doesn't bring down the FPS. This shows that its performance is fully capable of handling such a large screen. You can see that this development board comes with a boot, a reset button, 
These two buttons are used to upload program codes to this development board. Two buttons are required. Of course, some of you may know. We download the program directly. Do not press these two buttons. You can also download because some platforms, for example, when Arduino or other platforms download the ESP3 to S3 module program, it may have already pulled the required frequency to a downloadable state. That is to say, when it is downloaded, the default state may be downloadable, so you don't need to press reset and boot. But reset and boot can set your ESP3 to S3 module to download state. Did you understand what I said? The logic is this. That is to say, these two are settings. One is for restarting. The other one is a button for downloading. Of course, you can download them without clicking them. But once you Dante press them, when downloading fails, you need to use both of them. You can take a look. Click reset. It is a restart. You can see. After reset, it is a restart process. You can see reset. When we press boots, when you press reset again, you can see the screen. We press and hold reset, then press and hold the boot. You can see the screen is black. It is still powered on, but the screen doesn't show. It is now fully downloadable. Then you use other IDs to write programs. There is no problem with the uploaded development board. It is currently in a downloading state. Then after the download is completed, we press boot again. Press reset, reset. It will restart. When you start it, it is the program you downloaded. If the screen is not lit, you can use the UART monitor. See what the UART port outputs. Then you can understand the status of the development board. Of course, if you turn on the screen, if the screen is not lit, then you can also output data through the UART port, including your code. Check why the UART port is not lit. Then you can use it normally. Includes touch screen. We can touch to use some functions. In addition, this development board has many pins. These pins lead some pins of the ESP3 to S3 module to both sides of the PCB. It also includes some power and ground pins, other backlight pins, and some other related pins are brought out. This leads to a total of 30 pins, 15 pins per side, a total of 30 pins. In addition, the cable that comes with this socket is a cable for this screen. You can see that the screen is connected to this development board via cable. This cable contains two parts. Part of it is the data driver for this screen. This is a SPI screen. It is connected to the ESP3 to S3 module through this cable. It also includes a touch section. The driver of the touch part is also integrated with this cable. In other words, this cable is the entire screen, including a touch function cable. In addition, you can see that when this development board is powered on, this light is on. We press reset. This light is always on. We unplug the power cord. Unplug the USB. You can see that the light is turned off. That means there is no power supply. If the light is not plugged in, this light is not on. Check if there is a problem with the power supply or the development board is faulty. When plugged in, this light is on. Generally speaking, we use USB for power supply. The standard low voltage for USB is 5 volts. Normally, it works. If you find that it is not stable when working, for example, its screen charging is very slow or it's very laggy, maybe there's something wrong with your power supply. First, when the development board has problems, the first step is to check the power supply. We unplug the power. 
Change a power supply or reconnect the power supply. Ray power on. Then after power on, the power indicator light will light up. Then if we have written a program that can display on the screen, the screen will show. This will successfully light up our application and screen. You can proceed to the next test. In addition, when we use these pins, be sure to pay attention to the voltage of these pins. Because some pins have a voltage of 5 volts. Some pins have a voltage of 3.5 volts. For example, this has an output voltage of 3.3 volts. You can see there are two 3.3 volts. Then the one below is 5 volts. Some pins are D. It is recommended that you use these GPIO pins. It is best to have an external instrument to do some basic measurements. Because the GPIO interface of ESP32 S3, most are 3.3 volts. These are the GPIO interfaces marked with numbers. Most are 3.3 volts. Although these GPIO interfaces are more common GPIO interfaces, however, their functions are slightly different. It is recommended that you check the pin diagram of the development board. Confirm what function the corresponding pin has. Then connect some corresponding sensors or some controllers. In addition, this screen and tube angle can be used together. For example, we can use the touch function of the screen to control the tube angle output and input. Including we can use reset and boot buttons to do some other functions. For example, the reset button is connected to the power supply. We can use the reset button as a switch to trigger some functions, including boot button. Generally, the boot button is connected to the GPIO. We can press the boot button. The screen is actually unresponsive because it has little impact on the entire program. Because our program does not call the GPIO interface. You can use boot as a GPIO interface. After pressing the boot button, equivalent to GPIO connector grounding, then, for example, I can press the boot button. When setting GPIO, the entire screen is dark. This is all possible. We did not write this function for this program. You can try it. The GPIO0 interface can be used directly because this has a button switch. This small screen. The driver I see of its screen is GC9307. This driver is a common driver I see. This driver I see is supported in many open source projects. So everyone can have a lot of open source projects. Can run on this small development board to test some small open source projects together. Or some other interesting small programs. In addition, this development board, although relatively small, but its hardware configuration is already very high. For ESP3 to S3, 16 meters flash and 8 meters PS RAM, it's completely enough. In addition, its screen is relatively small, but it will drive very fast. Compared with some larger screens, it has its own unique advantages. That's it for today's video. We introduced this small board. If you are interested, you can try it. Okay, thank you for watching.